are some considerations that may be overlooked when sourcing an ERP solution and the subsequent contract negotiation? A good question. So oftentimes when, in my experience, I've seen when organizations are sourcing an ERP solution, whether it's to upgrade their current solution, their current ERP to the latest and greatest, or actually transition to a whole new ERP system, there's not a clear definition of what the intent of the upgrade is. I think understanding what you're trying to accomplish with an upgrade. Is it better system capabilities? Is it more scalability? Is it more flexibility in the system? Or does your, cur does your current system not exist at all, right? And it's not truly an ERP system. And once those, once those criteria are really defined and the requirements are understood, Another pitfall I see is when sourcing ERP systems is oftentimes organizations will just go for a direct out-of-box solution, which may not be robust enough to really meet their complex, highly manufactured, highly engineered parts, or they may get a solution that is overly customized that now makes simple processes more mundane, more time-consuming. So really understanding the intent, the goal, and what the long-term goals, what the long-term objective is of actually upgrading or implementing an ERP system. Then also understanding the various modules that you need in order for that ERP system to deliver its value. And really getting an ERP system that only has a supply chain module, but is not linked to an engineering module or maybe even a finance module, right, ultimately may result in more cost. So that's one of the considerations really when sourcing ERP. Now, in the subsequent contract negotiations, this is an area where, look, software contracts are pretty, yeah, they're written, they're not very easily negotiated. However, where I really like to focus my clients on is the post-implementation clauses. What type of support the client will can expect after the implement, implementation? What are any of the remedies for delays that are caused by the implementation partner? What are you know, how can we scale or expand the ERP in the future? What are the terms around updates to the modules? And there's a variety of ways to negotiate a contract. Standard terms, I mean, I hate to say it, but software contracts are what they are, right? There's licensing issues and such that clients have to abide by. But the, one of the other areas that I really like to emphasize in contract negotiations when sourcing ERPs is the data security. So as we're transitioning to more cloud-based solutions rather than you know locally installed solutions, you know I work with a lot of aerospace and defense companies. There's a lot of ITAR considerations in place. So really understanding who owns that data, how is that data secured, how are we making sure that we're meeting our obligations to our shareholders and clients. So I like to put all of those things in the contract and really outline remedies. And I do always want it to be mutually beneficial, right? It's a one-sided contract's not gonna make anybody happy. And nobody's really looking to litigate these contracts. So let's just put something in place that's gonna be effective and not gonna cost anybody additional money in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, contract negotiations are an interesting topic. I feel like we could have a whole show talking about reviewing and negotiating ERP contracts because it, it can really, there's there's so much involved and it can really have a big impact on the success of the program, especially if you have issues after the implementation. Mm 